Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we we'll make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. All right, let's get started. So now we are dealing with control systems control system the body is a control freak <laughs> all right so it wants to control thousands of like i said physiological variables variables temperature ph glucose level blood pressure and so on and so forth the water content different electrolytes it wants to control everything but the control is in order to achieve stability in the internal environment which is what homeostasis is all about that we talked about in the previous lecture earlier lecture now control system is what the body uses to achieve homeostasis stability now how does the body really do this we're going to be looking at those components of every that is common to different kinds of control systems okay i'm going to be looking at the components and the sequence and what the unique role those components play it will help you to enlighten you because that's the basis of physiology homeostasis and control system now let's start number one is that something has changed look at it this is normal range normal and it tilts there is now an imbalance so the first thing very logical that you think the body needs to do if it wants to bring it back to balance is that it must have a way to detect that there is a change it must have a way to know and say yes something has changed okay that is what is called sensor all right so number one you have the sensor sensor is also called receptor okay or detector anyone want to call it so the stimulus it's what causes the change the stimulus introduces and brings about that change that's this one here and then imbalance then the sensor detects oh there's a change then when it has detected what do you think should be the next thing it will do then it reports to another part of this component of the system and say something has gone wrong go it's reporting to the control center okay but what does he use to report you know communication the reporting is talking about communication remember the underlying principle that communication between cells organs and tissues and all of that is necessary for the integration coordination of physiological processes so this communication this means of communication is called the input signal i know the, the, the body communicates through different ways through electrical means nerves and through chemical means hormones and other chemical substances messengers we'll learn about that in further lectures so this input signal that it uses to report to this third component is called the input signal it has another name input signal it has another name that's called afferent 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 signal okay afferent note it because there's another one that sounds similar so now the control center is the third one what does the what do you think this control center does 
control center. It's also known as integrating center. Okay? So this is where the seat of decision making okay just like a child children they'll go and report to their parents mommy look at what this one has done then the parent will now sit down and take a decision so what happens here decision making but before decision making is done it first of all processes the information interprets it and knows what level of imbalance has occurred so that it will know how much correction should be done to bring it back you see so that's what happens at the control center a lot of the control center they happen in the brain but it's not only the brain but most of control it's the brain okay that's control center most of it all right so interpretation processing and then when it has made its decision it sends a message a command we're going to see what happens when it sends that command after this break right you're welcome back now let's see what happens when the control center has finished making its decision it will also need to communicate that decision okay so what does it use to communicate the same way it receives information most times if it's electrical means it's through a nerve so it's also through a nerve but this nerve is an output nerve that sends an output signal number four output signal output signal it has another name just like the input has so this one is now called inferent okay inferent signal they sound alike but the only difference is this e e afferent efferent okay so that's what happens it sends efferent signal through this to what? To the fifth and the final component of the control system. It's called effector. Number five. Effector. Now, very important. What does the effector do? The effector is implementer or implementer of the command remember that this thing that's coming here is a command you say do this thing commands it change it to this level change it back to this level okay so it's receiving just like the parent will give a command to the gate man or house help or whoever and say do this go and close the gate don't allow anybody any child to go out the gate man in that sense is the effector is the one that implements the command after decision has been taken okay so now this effector it might look abstract to you most of the time in the human body the effector they are usually muscles and glands muscles or and muscles and glands okay so what you know what muscle is and there are different kinds of muscles so you have the skeletal muscles that are the muscles that are attached to bones you also have cardiac muscle the heart the heart itself is a muscle but the one that is also very important it's very it covers a lot of organs is smooth muscle a very tiny very small you know that even your blood vessel for example your artery it's covered by smooth muscle they can contract and they can relax when it contracts it can reduce the diameter of the blood vessel and when it does that 
it will increase blood pressure. So if you want to control blood pressure, it's true contraction realization. That's one of the mechanisms. So a lot of things that have to do with effecting a change through muscles and through gl glands are organs that secrete chemical substances that influence chemical reaction. You know that chemical reactions are the basis of physiological function. So that's what effectors they do. So when the effector implements this command, it leads to a response that now brings it back to balance. So this is the overview of what control systems, what they do, how they affect the components. Very important. So in the part two, we will learn the very specific mechanisms of how these control systems, there are about three of them, we're going to learn them. So see you in the next video.